morning everyone today we'll be talking about fluorides what is fluoride fluoride is the ionic form of the element fluorine it is negatively charged and will not remain as a free element fluoride has high affinity for calcium therefore very compatible with teeth and bone what are the mechanism of actions of fluoride fluoride has a topical action a systemic action and an antibacterial action when we talk about the topical mechanism of action fluoride basically acts on the tooth by inhibiting demineralization and promoting remineralization now fluoride's role in remineralization when bacteria metabolize carbohydrates and produce acids the fluoride is released from the dental plaque in response to the lower ph levels at tooth interface to be more acid resistant and contain more fluoride and less carbonate the demineralized enamel crystals structures and takes up released plaque fluoride and salivary fluoride along with calcium and phosphate ions that is how remineralization happens now the ph in the oral cavity falls within seconds of ingestion of dietary sugars when we consume anything that is sweet or uh, as we call sucrose as an arch terminal so when we have something as a sweet the ph lowers and this ph can stay low for up to 2 hours which is when the bacterial action begins so the low ph leads to demineralization of the tooth structure and when ph returns to normal or neutral remineralization can happen so it is a uh turn wise or it is a cyclic process that is happening followed by remineralization and demineralization simultaneously the original mineral appetite structure of the teeth is rich in carbonate and is relatively less fluoride and is relatively soluble so when cycles of partial demineralization and remineralization in a fluoride rich environment can create a fluoride rich low carbonate appetite this is up to 10 times less soluble and than the original solid right question so when we summarize the anti caries action or how the fluoride acts the fluoride prevents demineralization fluoride enhances remineralization fluoride alters the action of plaque bacteria in the oral cavity fluoride aids in post eruptive maturation of enamel fluoride reduces enamel solubility so coming to in detail about the mechanism of action of fluoride i said uh, the first one that is improved crystallinity so how does it happen uh the fluoride when it goes and binds to the tooth structure it combines with the hydroxy apatite crystals that is already present in the tooth and it forms or it gets converted into what is called as fluorapatite crystals so this will improve the crystalline structure of the tooth next we have the void theory the void theory states that there are certain voids that are present in the uh, microcrystalline structure when you go to the microscopic structure of the tooth there are so many voids so when fluoride is present these voids are taken up by fluoride and it forms a more or less better structure and it becomes acid resistant then we have acid solubility when fluoride is present uh, the uh, the, solu the solubility is reduced and thereby acid attack can also be reduced the next theory is enzyme inhibition theory so uh, there is an enzyme called as enolase which helps in binding of the bacteria or the plaque bacteria to the surface of the tooth so when fluoride is present it inhibits this enzyme enolase so there is no action or there is no uh, adherence of the plaque bacteria onto the surface of the tooth so this will automatically reduce the tooth solubility suppressing the oral flora so when fluoride is present it causes a general suppression of the oral flora antibacterial action like i said uh, fluorides have the basic property of antibactericidal action so this will again benefit the tooth lowering the free surface energy when the free surface energy is lowered again there will not be binding of the bacterial or the plaque bacteria onto the surface of the these option of protein and bacteria when fluoride is present it causes lysis or it causes denaturation of the protein and the bacteria so there are chances of less caries again alteration in tooth morphology 
when fluorides are present, they cause uh, more or less rounding of the cuspal tips. So there will not be any kind of food lodgement or there will not be retention of plaque and food. So there will alteration in tooth morphology will help in uh, mechanism of action of the fluoride. Next, coming to the topical fluorides. So we said that uh, fluorides can be uh, rendered in the form of topical means, other means. So talking about the topical fluoride, we have self-applied or professionally applied topical fluorides. Under topical fluorides, as I said, we have professional and self-applied. Under professionally applied, that is the ones that you go to the dentist or a professional and they do it. So these are the professional techniques. Under that, we have the Hansen's technique, we have the Muller's technique, we have APF solutions or gels, amine fluoride and varnishes. Then the ones that is self-applied, that is the patient or the person can directly do it from his own home or chair side at his home. These are the commonly used ones, that is the dentrifices or the toothpastes that we use in a regular basis, mouthwashes and fluoride gels. Now, talking about the professionally applied ones or the ones that we apply visiting a professional or a dentist. We have solutions, we have gels, we have varnishes. Under that, the first one, we have sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride and acetylated phosphate fluoride. This is also called as APF. So, these are the commercially applied ones. What is the technique for application of sodium fluoride? Okay, the technique that is used here is called as a Knudsen's technique. As the name suggests, this was introduced by the person. So, what is the amount of sodium fluoride we use? We need two percent of sodium fluoride. Now, how do we prepare this two percent solution of sodium fluoride? To prepare two percent sodium fluoride, we dissolve twenty grams of sodium fluoride in one liter of water. That is how you adjust the concentration. That is two percent. The technique that we use here is the Knudsen's technique or the Knudsen and Feldman technique in the year 1948. This was introduced. So, what is the technique or what is the exact procedure that you follow? First thing is you need to make sure that you have a proper oral hygiene. You need to make sure that the teeth is free of all debris, and calculus, and all food lodgement. So, you do a thorough prophylaxis so that you have a clean teeth. Following this, you need to isolate the teeth. We do isolation because the solution should not come in contact with the soft tissues. Again, once isolation is done, isolation is done by means of cotton rolls, or you can use a rubber dam. Again, 2% sodium fluoride is applied once and it is allowed to dry for 3 to 4 minutes. And you see in the picture here, we have kept cotton holders on the buckle and the lingual side, and a cotton bud or a micro tip is used to dip it in the solution, and this is applied thoroughly onto the surface of all the teeth. And Wait for around three to four minutes for it to dry. So, in uh, Knudsen's technique, we have something called as choking off phenomenon. That is, when you continuously introduce sodium fluoride solution onto the surface of the tooth and it dries off, there is a formation of a product called as calcium fluoride. This will cause the effect as choking off phenomenon. The same way, this is repeated on the other quadrant. So we do it quadrant by so that the child is more comfortable and you have access or better access to all the quadrants. Once the sodium fluoride application is done, you instruct the patient not to eat, drink, or rinse for the next half an hour or 30 minutes. So, how many times do you apply? We spoke about uh, three to four minutes of uh, thorough application and then waiting. So, we need to do this at least. The second, third, and fourth applications, okay, they are done at weekly intervals. So that means the patient has to come at least four times in a month. Once today the patient is doing, then after a week, and again another after a week, and the fourth and last. Week. So there is a weekly interval. What are the advantages of sodium fluoride technique? It is chemically stable. The sodium fluoride solution that we prepare for person is chemically stable. It has an acceptable taste. It does not cause any irritation to the gingiva. However, we do isolate so that there is no salivary interference and uh, contact with the soft tissues. It does not discolor the teeth and it is less expensive. It is commercially 
uh, more simpler and it is commercially less expensive than the other solutions. But the disadvantage is that the patient has to visit you almost four times in a month within a short time. So the patient compliance is a must. If the patient visits you the first time and then does not do a follow up, then the treatment will not be as effective as you expect. Again, when we use sodium fluoride solution, they say that there is a 30% caries reduction compared to the others. 